All right, guys, welcome back to part two of moving my washer and dryer. Uh, we're basically gonna pick up right where I left off in part one. Uh, where we are now is I have all of the drain plumbing in, the vent, the P-trap, the sanitary tee, and then the pipe going down through the floor. Uh, nothing is glued in yet, so uh, what I'm gonna do, or what I'm gonna try and focus on for this video is I want to get the box installed, I wanna get the electrical box installed, I wanna get the pecs on, basically get everything in this wall finished so that I can continue down below the floor from there. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and let's get right to it. All right, so originally my plan was I had this mark on the wall here. Um, this is roughly where the top of the washing machine was. And I initially wanted to put this box uh, about in that area. Uh, but because of the dryer, since the dryer stacked right on top, the dryer vent exhaust is going to end up being right here. So I'm going to have to drop this box down just a little bit and mount it down there. And I have my standpipe cut. So this is the line that ties into the P-trap and goes from this box. So that is what they call a standpipe. And it needs to be at least 18 inches long and can be up to 30 inches long. Um, I cut mine 19, because that puts me right about where I want to be to mount this box. So I'm gonna go ahead and Slip this on here. And again, none of my plumbing piping is glued together yet. It's still all just dry fit. Now on this box, this cover comes off. So that cover comes off because when you install your drywall, um, you're gonna cut around this box and then that cover will fit over it. So that way you get a nice clean finish fit. Okay, so this box is mounted on there. Um, the way that this box gets mounted to the wall is you have these little brackets that come with it. And then you have these spots, little slots on the side and the bracket slips in this way and it has some little tabs cut in here and then that kind of locks it into place. So, So these go in kind of tight. So basically what I did is I just used the screwdriver to lift this tab up a little bit so that I could get it all the way in there. Now, this side over here obviously is gonna go into the wall. So I wanna kind of measure that. So I need to cut this off. <clears throat> so basically about five inches is where I want these. Is that hole there? You can see these ones on this side, uh, I got more than enough room, so I'm gonna cut them uh, right at this third set of holes here.
All right, so I have my tabs cut. I wanna make sure that this is fully seated here and that the standpipe is fully seated in the P-trap. And then this is almost right on, about right there. So once it gets level, then I'm gonna go ahead and just mount it. And I'm basically just using drywall screws. So this box is now mounted. So from here, what I'm going to do is I need to figure out where I'm going to bring my PEX lines in down on the ground here, as well as the electrical box for the dryer. So the dryer is going to end up being, I guess the bottom of the dryer will end up being about right here. And I have the electrical box that's going to be for the dryer here. So we'll mount that, I guess maybe right about there. And then I'm putting it on the same side. So basically in these two bays, I have the electrical on one side and then the plumbing all is gonna be on the other side so that they're separated. And then this is my outlet for the dryer, which will get mounted in there. And then I have a cover plate for it. All right, so this is where we're at. I have the outlet box mounted. Of course, there's no, no wiring going into that yet. I have the water box and drain, water line drain box, I guess, uh, installed. I have my standpipe. I have my P-trap. Goes over to the sanitary tee down below the floor. And then the vent goes all the way up into the attic space. So what I'm gonna to need to do now is figure out where down here to drill my holes for the PEX lines to go through. And then also a hole on this side for the electrical to come through to connect to this outlet. All right, so my two water connections are in there. And basically what I'm gonna do, you can see where the PEX connections are. I think I'm just gonna bring them straight down. There's enough space behind here that they could run. I mean, I could even kind of route them around a little bit, I guess, and, and I just have to watch out because there is a beam here. So I'm gonna have to check outside and then I'm gonna drill my two holes for the hot and cold water lines, which I'm gonna do very close to this edge so that hopefully I don't catch the house beams. And then same for the electrical connection is gonna go down here. All right, I just went outside and I measured from where the nail line is out there for this beam. So that stud down there, which is a four by eight, so it's three and a half inches wide, it goes from about four inches to seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna end up drilling out here. I think I'm gonna put the two holes for the PEX lines. And then over here, this one will be fine for the electrical. All right, so I have my holes drilled. This is for my electrical. This is for the hot and cold PEX lines. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go underneath the house and feed them in. All right, so I have everything running here with plenty of slack and what I'm gonna start on is the electrical. So this has to be stapled in place uh, behind this outlet box, up, and then into this outlet box. All 
All right. So I have staples in that electrical line all the way up here. It's pulled through the box and it's ready to terminate to the plug. And I pulled the PEX lines up through the ports that they're going to go into. And now I'm going to connect the PEX to the valves and crimp them. All right, so these are the crimp rings. And these are what they call the pro crimp rings. They have a little plastic flange on there or a little piece. And they basically just slide on to the end of the PEX like that. And what that plastic does is it spaces it the right amount of space from the where you're crimping it onto. All right, so I'm getting ready to crimp these PEX connectors on. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a fresh cut on these just to make sure that they're square. Slide the crimp rings back on and push them until they all touch the inside of this uh, plastic piece. And these are half inch lines. So, uh, this crimp tool that I got uh, it does half inch and three quarter inch. So blue line, I want to make sure I have the blue valve. <laughs> and then you push this on until it's fully seated. And then line up the crimp ring so it's centered on the crimp tool. Crimp it. And then rotate it. 90 degrees. And crimp it again. All right, so that's on. On this part, I'm just pointing out that there's some tabs on the valves and there's a keyway that it slips into. Um, trying to explain that and click them in and get everything to work. And then there's an O-ring that falls out on the hot water line. So I'm fixing that, getting it to click in, and then I'm switching it 180 degrees because it didn't click in that way. And there we go. and it clicks into place. And then this last one will be for my uh, drain line, which is right here. Okay, so those are done. All right, so I'm at the point now where I'm ready to glue all my pipes together. So I dry fit everything, everything fits how I want it to and is in the right place. Um, I have medium black ABS cement. So the way that you want to do this is I'm going to start here and then I'm going to glue that spot. Then I'm going to glue this one to the P-trap and then I'm going to glue the P-trap to this pipe, then this pipe to here, then this pipe to here, and then this will be the last one that I do. Um, I'm doing this one first because I'm not going to be able to fit it through the floor if I put that one in. And that's how it's going to go. So when you do this, uh, you want to make sure to wear gloves. Um, and you basically put a thin coat of this on the inside of the pipe. So this wall here, you can see the little chamfer there. That's where the pipe will end up sliding down to. 
So you put a thin coat on the inside of the fitting, you put a thin coat on the edge of the pipe all the way around about the same amount as what's going to go into the fitting, which is about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. When you put the fittings together, you want to slide them together while the cement is still wet and then you do a quarter turn and you basically want to hold it in place for about 30 seconds or you know not move it for 30 seconds so that it can bond and that's basically how you want to do it if your cement hardens for whatever reason if you take too long then just clean it out and then put apply a new coat and then redo it so i'm going to glue all this now All right, so I'm back outside and I'm to the point now where I am ready to run these PEX lines all the way back there, which you probably can't see, but like right there, I think is where the copper lines are that I'm gonna tie into. So I basically just have to route these PEX lines down and <clears throat> I think I'm going to just run them along this main beam I was going to drill holes and run them through these, but that's just too much work. So I'm going to run them down this main beam, and then I'm going to have to come back and get the, uh, or I'm going to have to run to the store and get the uh, little mounting brackets to hold the lines in. So it'll have to, it's basically going to loop around this beam, come in through here, and then run straight down. All right, so I got the PEX lines just run down over to here. And these two copper lines right here that are capped, uh, that's what I'm going to be tying into. So I think that these maybe at one time might have went to a dishwasher or something, if they had a dishwasher in the kitchen, which we don't have one now. But anyway, um, that's hot and cold water lines, and that's what I'm going to tie into. And then my drain line, which you can just barely see it sticking out right there, it's going to come down here. And then that's going to tie into this, which is the kitchen drain line. So that's where my um, sanitary tea will go into, and then it'll go right into there. And then that goes into the main sewer line that goes over to the cesspool. All right, here's those 90 degree uh, little fittings I was talking about. These are actually made so that these can stub out, um, like if they're coming in a wall or something. Um, but I'm going to use them here to get the packs going, you know, 90 degrees the way that I need them to go. Um, so this will basically bend them in a nice even curve and it won't kink. But I wish I would have saw I had to feed the PEX line through there before I ran it all the way down there. All right, so I got those two things installed. And basically all it's going to do is just make sure that these go in the right direction and have a nice bend in them and won't kink. And then I'll end up running this down there. It's going to cross under this beam. And then it's going to go down along the inside of this beam. All right, I am under the house. And sorry for the noise. I'm sitting right behind where the dryer is and it's running right now. So it's blowing hot, humid air right at me, which is awesome. <laughs> so these are the lines that I'm going to be tying into. The one closest to me is the cold line. Actually, I take that back. The one closest to me is the hot line, and then this one behind it is the cold line. I had to look at which one goes down to the hose bib and then where I did my... And it's kind of funny because this thing isn't leaking anymore. So I don't know if you remember when I did my um, ice maker water line hookup when i put this shark bite fitting on it was leaking it's not leaking anymore so i guess it sealed itself up <laughs> and i'm going to be using the same fittings on this so this is a shark bite fitting it goes from three quarter to half inch and this works with pex or copper so it's going to slide onto the copper side and then the half inch pex is going to slide into this side um, I don't think that I'm going to film this because I don't have any way to hold the camera and do this all at once. So 
I think I'll just do it and then show it when it's done. All right, so that went really well. Um, <clears throat> these are all on, they're connected. They're running all the way down there. And then, you know, like I said, I'm going to be getting some of the mounts uh, clips to put them up on this beam so they're not gonna be hanging like that. Uh, but this is all done. And I don't know if you notice on the time lapse, but there was some pretty kind of rusty water that came out of this when I first cut them. And that's because these pipes are below all the rest of the pipes. So this whole section of the pipe was full, basically. And this water was just sitting stagnant. So it's good that I drained those lines and then they will now be used. And it's kind of funny, I even smelled a little bit of bleach in the line, which was from when I did the bleach in the catchment tank. All right, so back inside. There's no leaks on here. There's no water on here at all, which is good. So I'm gonna open these up real quick. All right, let's see. Okay, that one works. <laughs> all right, that one works too. And those are gonna have a lot of pressure because it's going from a three quarter inch line down to a half inch line, which will be nice because it'll shorten our washer times because it won't take so long to fill. All right guys, so I'm at the point now where I'm getting ready to do the drain line that goes underneath the house. So I have my uh, pieces of 10 foot uh, pipe up there. And the way it's going to work is coming out of the house is going to go into this 90. It'll be a 10 foot piece, then it'll be a coupling, then another 10 foot piece. And if I need to do another coupling to reach, it'll be another coupling. And then it'll be a 90 that turns back and goes towards the kitchen sink drain. And then the sanitary tee will tie into the kitchen sink drain. And then this is my strapping. So this is to support the pipes uh, as they go down the line because you know they're gonna have water in them, they have the weight of the pipe, so you gotta do that. And you basically just bend these and put them up and screw them into the rafters. All right, I'm back under the house. I have my 10 foot sections of piping. And the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm going to put a piece of strapping about 10 feet down so that I can support that end of the pipe and then I'll come up and then I'll do the, I'll connect the 90 to here and then connect the 90, connect the pipe to the 90. All right, so I have that piece of strapping and it's just in there temporarily just to support the pipe while I make this connection on this 90. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this and record it. So I'm just gonna do it and I'll be back. All right, that one's done. Now I'm going to continue down I have to use a coupling. I'll put up another piece of temporary strapping. Um, the general rule for this is to drop a quarter inch every foot. And I'm actually gonna go a little bit more than that because I have to clear, I don't know if you can see those horizontal copper pipes down there. I'm actually ha gonna have to go underneath those. So I'll have a little bit more slope than what the minimum is, but that should be fine. All right, it's starting to get kind of dark under here. Um, so this is where I'm gonna be tying in. Grab that. So my sanitary tee is going to be going onto that pipe there and then coming this direction towards us. Uh, it's gonna come out here, there'll be a 90 and then it'll connect to the line that's going over there. Now I thought that this was going to be 20 feet but um, this pipe is going to have to get cut because 20 feet is like way longer so you see that see how there's just a little bit of bow in the pipe right there so I'll go back and I'll add in more supports you know every six feet or something and put a support in to hold that up so it could be as straight as possible even though it's sloping downward
Whew, okay. So that piece is in. That was extremely tough to get in because I thought that that top pipe, once I cut it, would have a little bit of play in it. It did not really at all. So I basically had to bend both pipes forward towards me far enough to slip that piece in and then push them back without breaking it. Man, that was tough. <laughs> All right, so now I got to get a piece to cut to come out to here. And right now I'm going to go and put the coupling on that piece of pipe so that I can get a distance to cut this pipe to go from there to the 90 that's going to be here. All right, so I got the coupling glued on right there only to the incoming pipe. This pipe is not glued in, obviously. Um, so I'm going to slip that in uh, and then hold it up and line it up with this one so that I can get a measurement. And that's going to go into this 90 that will go in a pipe over to there. So I'm not gonna be able to do this with the camera on because it's just too much to do. I need both hands. Now it's starting to get even darker. All right, I have these pieces all cut. That's going into the sanitary tee. Hopefully this is in focus, I can't really tell. And down to there. So right now, this none of this is glued in. It's just dry fit. Um, but you can see that's fairly straight. Uh, that's fairly straight so I think that we're good I'm gonna go ahead and glue these. Right. I just realized that I can turn on my light when I'm filming so that helps out a lot <laughs> okay so everything is glued together now um, I put one strap here I'm going to add a couple more on the distance down there so this is all done this drain is fully in sanitary tea down into the main drain from the sink another sanitary tea and then that line goes down all the way to the catchment this is the main drain line for all the all the how well this side for the kitchen I guess and washer and dryer so you can see where the other washer and dryer or I mean for the other the washer and dryer is currently hooked up you can see all the piping there it just goes right into the same line so it's same difference as far as drainage. So that's it. Uh, on here, when I, I'm gonna support those a little bit better. You don't want this stuff to actually touch. Um, so hopefully when I lift this up, this will come down just slightly. If not, then I can come back here and I can, well, actually this thing needs to be tied up here and then there's plenty of gap in there. Uh, but yeah, this is all done. So I'm going to put in the strapping, then I'll head back inside. All right, so this is done. I got the last piece of strapping in. There's my long 90 going down. Has a nice slope all the way. And then down there does the 90 into the kitchen sink drain with another sanitary tea. All right, so back inside, everything is hooked up as far as the water lines, the drain lines. Uh, we have water in here. The drain line is done all the way to tied into the kitchen sink drain. So technically right now we could actually hook up the washing machine. Um, I think this is where I'm gonna end this video. So this is where I'm gonna end this video. This will be the end of part two. And then part three, we will pick up working on the electrical. Um, this outlet box is installed, but the wire is basically just run down under the floor. So nothing is done with the electrical yet. And then once the electrical is run for the dryer, then we can bring the washer in and actually set it up. And I'm going to need to actually do a dry run of the washer and dryer so I can see where the exhaust uh, tube will go for the dryer. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for part two. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was informative. And uh, if you could subscribe and give me a like, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video. Aloha.